Welcome back to a small Blu-ray update. Got a bunch of Vinegar Syndrome titles here that I've finally made my way through and I uh, wanted to share it with you. First up is the worst of the bunch. That is Old Dracula 1974, David Niven. A horror vampire comedy. Um, this, is, this is a great example of a film that for me, anyway, just doesn't hold up to repeat viewings. The first time I watched it, I was like, eh, there's parts of it that's kind of funny, and it's lighthearted and silly. I, I guess I enjoyed it. I gave it a 6 out of 10. And then I watched this Vinegar Syndrome release, which looks great, by the way. But the movie just was... I found it very tedious on the second reviewing. Very, very tedious. Not funny. And, and quite honestly, kind of embarrassing for David Niven. I, I just found it kind of embarrassing. I, I wouldn't have... Um, I don't know if I was an actor, if I'd have put this on my on my screen, my credits, on my resume. But you have to watch it for yourself and see. I just don't think it holds up to repeat view. I think it's very tedious and monotonous once you've seen it one time. The... the um, that, I mean, the release is beautiful. I mean, sound quality is great. Picture quality is great. It's just um, not a film for me that holds up very well. So... I give it a... I really, the second watch, I give it four out of ten there is not a lot of special features on this there's an interview and that's pretty much it a nine minute interview and then a trailer of course the trailer and promo gallery that's pretty much it pretty bare bones release actually next up was a pleasant surprise and that is the severed arm now this is a nineteen. This is a slice of nineteen early nineteen seventies low budget independent filmmaking that I really really enjoyed. Um, it's about it's about a a group of guys that get trapped in a cave and they're starving and they take they just they basically decide the only way they're going to survive is if they start eating their body parts and so they draw straws and one guy loses but as soon as that happens they're they're saved and uh the guy comes back and seeks his revenge basically it, it's kind of a it's basically a proto slasher 1973 i really enjoyed this one thomas alderman directed it now I, it's a shame that he didn't do other movies this is the only thing he did um uh, because i think this was a really really good piece of work the acting is the acting is surprisingly good. Uh, it's moody. It's atmospheric. The only the only negative I could see to this is the special effects are really the the special effects are Herschel Gordon Lewis type style special effects. I mean it's it's obvious a plastic arm you know, uh, but other than that I mean I thought this was really good. Very suspenseful. So pleasant, pleasant surprise. I give it a seven out of ten. Um, there's a couple of interviews on this one. One with the producer, and I think the cinematographer was on this one. Yeah, I, 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 I highly recommend Severed Arm. I give it a seven out of ten. Very enjoyable watch. Next up is another very enjoyable watch, and that is another Vinegar Syndrome release. Let me find. I think I gave it a 7 out of 10. And that is The Caller, 1987. Malcolm McDowell and Madeline Smith. I, I've got a thing for Madeline Smith. She um, she has a cleft chin. I guess, Madeline Smith, her, her claim to fame, of course, is Urban Cowboy. And she's just a knockout in that. But I, I really like this movie. I like contained horror, and this this film takes place almost ninety some percent of it takes place in one or two rooms in a house, and it's just it's just an it's just an interplay between uh, Malcolm McDowell, who shows up at her doorstep in the middle of the night, supposedly with a broken down car, and uh, her, and and the, it just gets very interesting. The dialogue is interesting. Malcolm McDowell's always interesting to look, to listen to and watch, and um, 
that on Smith is great to look at. So you, you really can't beat this. My, I probably, if I had any complaint at all, I think the ending was a little, um, I don't know, off in the bushes. It was a little bit far fetched, but I, I I still liked it. I don't I don't I didn't dis, didn't dislike it, but I could see some people being put off by kind of the climax of this one. Other than that, I think it was great. I give it an eight out of ten. Eight out of ten, actually. Uh, this one has interviews, a couple of interviews. I wish one. I wish this one had an audio commentary, but it it does not, unfortunately. Um, great, great. I mean, all the scans on this are all the vinegar syndrome releases. The scans are pristine, beautiful to look at. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed this one a lot. Directed by Alan Settleman, who I don't know that he did. Oh, uh, he did Hercules in New York. That's Arnold Schwarzenegger's big film that came, when he came out. Um, other than that, he's done a bunch of dramas. But yeah, this this was an excellent, excellent film. Enjoy, highly enjoyed it. Definitely recommend the caller. And then finally. To wrap things up, I finished up the Beastmaster 4K, also from Vinegar Syndrome. What a nice release! I mean, this is just this this is a really really. If you're a fan of the Beastmaster, this is the edition to get. So you got the film here with its with its own slip cover, and you've got two cuts of the film. You've got. Um, the theatrical and then you've got a director's special effects version which I watched them both I mean they're both the same runtime I wasn't really couldn't tell any difference to be honest with you a lot of great special features on this there's a new audio commentary with Don Costarelli and Paul Pepperman the two guys that are kind of partnered up and did Phantasm and this film and then um, a great documentary five-part documentary and then another hour-long documentary on disc two so there's a, there's there's a lot on there to digest fantastic release one of their best here's the booklet with some great artwork really nice so yeah i mean i think if you don't have the beastmaster in this edition you're doing yourself a disservice uh, I think the film's a little long, to be honest with you, two hours long, and, and it was interesting to listen to Costarelli talk about it because he said the same thing. The film was never intended to be two hours long. What happened was that the financing side of this production kind of took over the film away from Don Costarelli, and, and when they got to the editing process, he apparently was just kicked out of the editing room entirely and someone told the financing guy that this film needed to be longer, so all the scenes were just uh, re-edited to length lengthen them, which I think hurt the film, to be honest with you. But it's a fun film. I think it gets a lot of... Um, it gets a bad rap for being kind of a uh, Conan ripoff, but the reality is that this film was in the canon done a couple months before Conan came out. So it's it's really that's really an unfair that's an unfair review of the film in my opinion. So yeah, Beastmaster 4K must own. All right, I think that's going to do it. Just a quick update. I'll be back with other stuff I'm working my way through, and I appreciate you watching. Thanks.